Upon addressing commissioned officers, it was his favourite theme. John Ball stood patiently waiting for the eloquence to spend itself. The tedious flow continued, then broke off very suddenly. He looked straight at Sergeant Snell inquiringly, whose eyes changed queerly, who ducked in under the low entry. John Ball would have followed, but stood fixed and alone in the little yard, his senses highly alert, his body incapable of movement or response. The exact disposition of small things, the precise shapes of trees, the tilt of a bucket, the movement of a straw, the disappearing right boot of Sergeant Snell, all minute noises, separate and distinct, in a stillness charged through with some approaching violence, registered not by the ear nor any single faculty, an onrushing pervasion, saturating all existence, with exactitude, logarithmic, dial-timed, millesimal, of calculated velocity, some mean chemist's contrivance, a stinking physicist's destroying toy. He stood alone on the stones, his mess tin spilled at his feet. Out of the vortex, rifling the air it came, bright, brass-shod, pandoran, with all fillings screaming, the howling crescendos up-piling snapped. The universal world, breath-held, one half-second, a bludgeoned stillness. Then the pent violence released a consummation of all burstings out, all sudden uprendings and rivings through, all taking out of vents, all barrier-breaking, all unmaking, per nitric begetting, the dissolving and splitting of solid things, in which unearthing aftermath John Paul picked up his mess tin and hurried within, ashen, huddled, waited in the dismal straw. Behind E Battery, fifty yards down the road, a great many mangolds, uprooted, pulped, congealed with chemical earth, spattered and made slippery the rigid boards leading to the emplacement. The sap of vegetables slobbered the spotless breech block of number three gun.